We greet everyone in the peace of the Lord Jesus. Now in reverence to the Word of God, we're going to stand up at this moment. In the Gospel, according to Mark, the second of the New Testament, chapter 8, Mark 8, Mark 8, We're going to read from verse 22. From 22, verse 22. This says the Bible. Now, Jesus and his disciples went out to then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his house saying, Neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. Lord, we praise you for the blessing you have already given to us tonight You're in your presence in our midst. For the joy, Lord, of salvation, blessed be your holy name, Lord, for all the benefits that you have already given to us throughout the period of praise, and that in your word we may continue to operate and bless your people in your church. We praise in the name of your holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The word says that in the book of John, and I'm going to use a couple of verses so that the brethren may understand later on what we are going to deal with tonight. The Bible says that there was a man called John. This man was sent by God, and he came to testify. So he came as a, a testimony so that he, everyone would testify about the light to everyone, but he was not the light. But he came to testify about the light. And the word says, Jesus himself says that the prophet born out of a woman, there was no other like John the Baptist. But John the Baptist, he was not a light. He was, and since he was, was unable to perform any miracle, he was not able to make any miracle to take anyone from darkness. But he testified, he evangelized, he spoke. And after him, that, that after him, there was going to be someone that was in, in the midst of the people and that the people didn't know and that came before him. And that we would manifest on those days and that one would be the true light or the one that was going to come to take men out of darkness. And the word says, my brethren, that this John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, he proclaimed to everyone, here is the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. He was saying, I'm not the Lamb, but this one that is in your midst, he is the Lamb, and he has the power to take away the sin from the entire humanity. And everyone heard it. And on the following day, there were once again this John the Baptist, the prophet of God, and we know clearly that the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Once again, the spirit of prophecy was in that place testifying regarding Jesus. And beside John, there was there were two disciples. One was called Andrew, and another, whose name was not mentioned. And when John points out to Jesus, he says, 
Here is the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. Those two men that were disciples of the greatest prophet born out of a woman, they stopped being prophet. They stopped being followers of this prophet, John the Baptist, and began to follow, to follow Jesus. They stopped following the prophet in order to follow Jesus. And he, Jesus noticed that they were following him. And then he asked them, what do you guys want? What is your purpose in following me? And they said, I want to know where you live. In other words, I want to live with you. I want to be beside you. I want, I want to know where you reside. And we know where is the residence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this Andrew, he called, he had a brother called Simon. And when he spoke to his brother Carl, called, called Simon, we found the Messiah. In fact, he didn't find the Messiah, the Messiah found them. The sent one of God, the anointed one, the, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. When Simon goes there to present himself to Jesus, Jesus looks to him and says, Simon, son of Jonah, you will be called Peter. And already gave to him a prophecy. Already had revealed a plan, a project that God had for his life. And then those two found another individual called Philip and Philip called another person called Nathaniel. And when Nathaniel went to meet with Jesus, Jesus said, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. And he said, What an amazing thing. How can this man find me? Know the place where I was. Why is that? Because there was the spirit of prophecy that was revealing all things to show to those men who was the one who was calling them into his presence. That's why spiritual gifts are so important in the life of the church. And when that individual was amazed with this revelation, Jesus said something interesting. Were you amazed with this? Just because uh, I s said that I saw you under the fig tree, you were amazed? I'm going to tell you another thing. Greater things, greater than this, you will see. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus found him under the fig tree. Jesus found you under a fig tree, under a revelation, under a project. Do you believe that Jesus found you? Greater things you will still see. And Jesus said, it's now because you believed in what I told you before. In truth, I tell you that from this day forward, from this day forward, from this moment forward, from this moment forward, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God going up and down upon the Son of Man. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the promise for the church, that the church was going to see the Son of God and the angels of God going up and down and coming down upon Him. And now, my brethren, we are here dealing with the healing of a man that inhabited on a town. And this town was uh, as a, a town that was at the, at the shore of the Sea of Galilee, known in the Bible and those people that inhabited in that region, they were called the Galilee of the Nations or the Galilee of the Gentile, which typif typifies the world. The sea speaks about, about the world. But on the shore of that sea, there was a town 
called Betsaida, which means house of the fish. Christianity is identified with the Christ, uh, with the cross, right? The old Christianity, the apostolic Christianism, is 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 now is identified with a fish. I believe that most of you know that Christians, when they were not able to congregate, so the individual would s s stay on the side of the road, and on the on a day where there was a service, the individual would draw with his foot. He would draw a fish, and that meant that this individual was a Christian, and there was going to be a service that day. They were going to the cemeteries or the tombs or the forests, and there they would have a service, because fish meant Christianity. So, house of the fish, and today the house of the fish is the church. The church is the house of the fish, oh, the place where you fish. The first disciples of Jesus, they were all fishermen. And Jesus said, you were fishermen of fish. From this day forward, you will be fishermen of souls. And the word says then that in the house of the fish, beside it, a, a man was brought who was blind. And the, the people brought him evangelized him, spoke about him, uh, spoke to him about who Jesus was. And the man was blind, he was in darkness, he was not able to see, he needed help. He needed someone to conduct him to Jesus because he didn't know who Jesus was. Why is that? Because his eyes were closed. And if we compare with humanity nowadays, it is just like that. Many people, they are not able to come to Jesus, and they need the, the help of the people, of the brethren, to conduct them towards the presence of God. And the word says that when Jesus comes in Bethsaida, in the house of the fish, the man that was guided to that place by other men into that place, they made a supplication, they pleaded, they prayed. So what a church, eh? amen, glory to God. They knew who, where Jesus was going to be, that he was going to be in that place. They took a, a person that was in need of a blessing, spoke to that person regarding Jesus, and brought them, brought this person to the presence of God. They said, well, we cannot heal you. But we are going to he bring you into a place. I'm going to bring you before a person. This person will be able to heal you and solve all your problems. So then when he came in, into this place, and the people that prayed for him, and that made a supplication to Jesus, and prayer is exactly this, is a supplication, is a request of a call for help. Lord, we present this person before our face. Look at the situation of this person. Help. Come with the providence, with the help, and refreshing, relief, healing, save, deliver. So they came into the presence of Jesus and they pleaded, they supplicated so that God could touch on that person. And sometimes we are as men. We think that, that we pray for a person, and we think that if the Lord only touch touches on them, the problem their problem will be solved. Isn't it true? If the brother there in the hospital is um, is in that situation, God go there and touch on him, and heal him, take him out of that situation in the intensive care, deliver him from the equipment that he's hooked up to. This is valid. That's all right. But that's not the only project of God for the life of man. If we only desire the Lord for this life, we are miserable. 
the pressure of God goes way beyond than a healing or a deliverance of a resurrection. Because truly, but at one moment, Jesus touched on the on a coffin and the dead got up. You see the power of God. And they asked for Jesus to touch on him. Lord, touch on this man so that virtue may come out of you, that you may heal him. Touch on him so that you may feel the situation in which this person finds himself in, so that you move your heart and sense feel the, the pain of this person that came into your presence. Jesus touched me. Jesus touched me and he filled my heart with peace. Sometime we plead to the Lord so that he might do this to us. To touch on this, to bring, bring peace, comfort, refreshing, relief. But the, part, the plan of God is greater than that. And it asks for Jesus to touch but Jesus did not touch. Jesus did not touch. The word says that did Jesus took this man by the hand. The Bible says he took what is what is what is to take to conquer, to take possession, to take him for himself. Jesus chose this man use his hand, he uses the ministry, the, the work that he came to do, to bring men close to here into his presence. And this, that has always been the desire of the Lord, to guide men back into his presence. So Jesus does not touch so that this man is healed, but Jesus takes him by the hand and guide him to him to his presence. And the word says that he did not operate on the town, but it took him out of the town. He takes him by the hand and takes him out of that place. Last week, Pastor Rodriguez spoke about two times, uh, man's time and God's time. My time was counted towards death, but was pleasing to the Lord so that I may live in eternity. So the Lord takes him out of that place, takes him out of that time, takes him out of that situation, or of that location where he was, where he was waiting to receive a blessing. He takes him out. What does that mean, to take someone out? There are many people here. That I take Brother Matthew and take him out. Why? So that I, I can have a, a private meeting with him. Because salvation is something, uh, an intimacy, a relationship between only you and God. So Jesus took that man out so that only the two of them would be together. So that Jesus could operate and manifest his power, his grace, his mercy with him. This is a meeting of the sinner with the Savior. So when he he takes him out, the word says that he spits on the eyes of that man. And what does that mean? And it was something that was generated by the Lord that comes from inside of him, comes out of his mouth. It's the power of God, the grace of God the mercy of God to deliver man from the darkness to cause him to see the plan and the project that God has for his life so he spits and what comes out of his interior his desire on the eyes of this man so that this man could be healed of that infirmity and the word says that he does not do only that. But he also pray with the laying of hands. What is to lay of hands? Pray with laying of hands. When we pray with laying of hands, we say three words. We speak about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the 
obtain the consolation of the Holy Spirit. So when he pray with the laying of hands, he liberates the grace, the healing, the deliverance, the forgiveness. He caused this man to participate on something special, something with him. He makes an atonement of sin in the past, in the Old Testament. I would go with my family before the priest. I would bring an animal, a lamb, or maybe a dove, a bull, a calf, depending on the situa financial situation of each one, and they would place their hand upon this animal because I would transfer my guilt into that animal. And then animal was killed, and then, then I would be free from my guilt or of my sin. And when Jesus prays with the laying of hands, he is transferring the sin of that man upon him so that would, he would later on nail it on the cross of Calvary because without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So he was speaking about the forgiveness of God through his own sacrifice, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And laying of hands, it was used to consecrate to anoint us when somebody was going to be anointed. When you go into the Old Testament, Aaron was anointed, and then Aaron, most they will anoint the successor who was Mo Joshua. So then they pray with lay of hands upon Joshua. Why? Because this person was set apart by the Lord. And that man that went there only to be touched by the Lord, he was now receiving a prayer with laying of hands upon him because God separated him from himself. He was not only a guest, somebody that was called, but he was someone that was chose, chosen to participate in the plan, the project, and the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the Lord, after doing all those things, the Lord asked a question. What are you seeing? I took you out of the town. My word took you out of darkness. I already for, for, have forgiven your sins. I already healed your infirmities. I brought you peace, comfort, refresh, relief. And now, what are you seeing? What do you see? And the answer was very interesting. He said, he raises up his eyes. In Psalm 121, he says, I raise my eyes towards the mountains. Psalm 121, the man was looking to the mountains. When, when this man looked up, and while he sees, he doesn't see Jesus. He doesn't see Jesus. He doesn't look to Jesus. He doesn't look high up. There's a song that says, uh, our victory comes from high above. Where my help is going to come. It's going to come from above. Where uh, where the healing came from to this man. Where deliverance came to this man. Where salvation came from to this man. Came from home. For Jesus. And why was he looking towards man and seeing man like trees? Why is he not looking to Christ, the author and finisher of his faith? The man who healed and saved him and delivered him. What are you looking? Do you see anything? That was Jesus' question f to that man. And the man look, looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. In my bread, man, they are not trees. And trees, they only walk in cartoons. <laughs> they walk back and forth only in cartoons. Man is not a tree. And trees, they don't walk. But when he said that he saw man like tree, tree have three characteristics, the basic characteristics. They have three functions. They serve for three purposes. 
I spoke about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? So now three, a few of them, they sh produce shade. A few produce shade, and another, uh, a few others produce flowers and shade. And a few others, they produce shade, flowers, and fruit, right? There are a few that only have leaves. And Jesus once, he went to and looked for, for fruit on a fig tree, and he said, and couldn't find. So he said, let this tree dry up. This tree only had appearance, but had no fruits. Through the fruit, you will know the tree. So when he looked to man, a tree, he, in spite of having an experience with the Lord Jesus, he continued to believe that he depended on man because he was brought by man to that place. He was evangelized by man. He was introduced to Jesus by man. He continued to in the dependency of man. Jesus healed him. Jesus delivered him. But he was still trusting on a man and still connected to a man. That's why when he sees man, the first thing he says, I see man. And many times, Man is evangelized by the Son of God, and this is our role. Go to the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature, and you will be saved. And who doesn't believe is already condemned. But we cannot depend on man. Oh, my father, uh, my, that's, that person is my father in the faith, because he evangelized me, he brought me to the house of the Lord, he did this and that. But it's Something interesting about the tree is something that I already said. One of the three things, one does only one thing. Behind my house, there is a tree that in a period of, of the year doesn't have fruit, the leaves, or flower. It's behind my house. I don't know the name of the tree, but it is there. I can show you. What does it mean? It means that one year has four, four seasons, right? Spring, summer, autumn, and fall. And tree is, uh, is subject to four seasons. And the spring and produce flowers and then the fruits. And there are men, servants of God, me, me, women of God. They are being used by the Lord to, brought, to bring us into the presence of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord for them. But we cannot still be looking to these people, depending on them, waiting to receive something from them. Why that? Because we are subject to this time, times, man's time. There are a few days where, where you look to the tree and the, the tree cannot cast a shade. It doesn't have a word of refreshing relief. There are days where you look to the tree the tree has no flowers. It's not being used by the spiritual gifts. It's not doesn't have a pro prophetic word for my life, for your life, for our lives. There are days that you look to the tree and it does not produce any fruit. It has nothing. It doesn't have food for your soul. So then you need to stop looking to the tree or to think that man is a tree that can give you shade or that he can give you the flowers or in other words, the prophecies regarding your life or that they can feed you spiritually every day, sustain you with the Word. Only the Word of God can sustain men. Individual A, a food that came from God, he walked 40 days and 40 nights until he came to Oreb, the Mount of God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. That's it. That's what it is. The one who sustains man is the Lord. That individual, in spite of having that wonderful experience of the Lord, he was still looking to man and thinking that the man was a tree, the man was going to bring peace to him and refreshing shade Man, a tree is also subject to the storms. A hurricane comes and, and you see a bunch of trees that have been toppled and destroyed. So we cannot trust on men. The word says, 
curse is a man who believe who trusts us all men. So we should not look to men. We need to look to Jesus, author and finisher of our faith. Amen. We say with the first prayer with lay of hands. It speaks of the baptism and the repentance and forgiveness. But now he needed he was healed of his infirm his physical infirmity. Now he needed to be healed of his spiritual infirmity. Now he needed to stop looking to man. And now Jesus does not speak. Now he puts his hand. He covers. From this day forward, we are not going to look to any man or to any tree. From this day forward, we are going to receive another prayer with lay of hands. Now you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. When the brother Ananias went to in Damascus to the house where Paul was was staying, he said, "Brother Paulo, the Lord has spoke to you in the, in the road to Damascus. He asked me to be here to talk to you, so that I can pray for you, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit." When Paul had the, had that experience, he never he said, "I never consult the flesh or the blood. I never." look to men anymore because now I had a, an experience of a baptism of the Holy Spirit I had an experience with, with God himself so the scales fell from my eyes now I can see uh, afar very clearly what the eye hasn't seen the, heard has, the ear hasn't heard those are the things that the Lord has prepared for, for the man who loved God that was the situation of this man I'm going to cover your eyes from this day forward you're not gonna you're not gonna look to any man. And my brethren, we need to leave this experience of receiving receive the ones who haven't received this second prayer of lay of hands. Second prayer, baptism with the Holy Spirit. We're dealing with this this week. Who can baptize you with the Holy Spirit? Is it the pastor or the sister or the teacher? Wasn't it true? But who is? John said, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Well, we are on the last days. The great day is coming. Isn't it true? There's so little time. And at this moment in which we are leaving, we need may Jesus cover our eyes so that we may not see any man. But may he pray for the second time with this laying of hands upon uh, the entire ch church so that we may have our lamps filled with the Holy Spirit. So when this man received the prayer with the laying of hands, he looked look clearly. Now he had a steady gaze. Now when he, looked to the, when he was looking to the tree, it was not a steady gaze because the trees were walking back and forth. They were moving from one place to another. And many times, this man is like this, moving from one place to another. Oh, this place is not good, then I'm going to go to the other place. So it's not good there, then I'm going to another place. In the last days, the Bible speaks about that, that man would go from a place to another. He saw the trees moving, man moving back and forth without a direction. But now he was looking with steady gaze. He was able to look to eternity. He was looking for the plan and the project that the Lord Jesus had for his life. He looked with a steady gaze and he was, he was restored. The Lord wants to restore us. There was a deficiency and this deficiency was removed at that moment. And the moment in which the Lord Jesus prayed with the laying of hands for the second time. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit does to, that to us. It opens up our spiritual eyes, the, spirit, the eyes of faith. And we can see from afar the entire project of a God. He wanted to be touched. People that brought him there wanted him to be touched. But he was taken. He was taken away. The Lord wants to take over you, my brother and sister. The Holy Spirit wants to take a hold of your entire life. 
Okay, I want you to manifest upon your household, over our family. He doesn't want to heal you alone, only but he wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He, want, he has a new heaven, new earth. He has the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He wants you to speak in other tongues, that you prophesy, that you testify of this great love that God has for towards you. He was now able to see because his eyes had been opened. My brother and sister, the Lord wants you to see. See the great project that God has to perform in your life. You are a person that has been chosen by God. The anointed, uh, they are chosen. The ones who have received, have received prayer with lay of hands because they have been chosen. The ones who are baptized with the Holy Spirit, they, they are the ones who are chosen. Looking in his study gaze, he was restored. And now he was able to see from afar. Now he sees eternity. He can see the entire project of God for his life. And the end of this experience, the Lord showed him, I'm going to send you. Because Jesus, sometimes he advises. When he's a servant, of, uh, when he's servant, he gives an order. When the person understands that he's a servant, he obeys. And Jesus gave an order. Jesus didn't make a suggestion. He said, go to your house. Brother and sister, you have a house. God is sending you to go home. You have a house in heaven. You have a dwelling in eternity. Go to heaven. Go to your house. Don't go back to the world. God already take to cook you out of the world. You are not the world. You do not belong to this world. In the house of the Lord, there are many dwellings. Go back to your house. It's time for you to go back home. The great day is coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah.
Not too good. Let's stand up, my brother. Hello, Luis. We're going to have a word of glorification to our God. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your name. Because we're prepared, Lord, we praise you. Because this great day is coming, Lord. You have prepared our church, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Because you have helped us to this day, Lord. I praise because you are God of love. You are God, mighty God. Oh, I praise you because you're in the house, Lord. Let's be your name, Lord. We praise you in the name of your beloved Son. Glory to Jesus. Let's be your name, Lord. Eternal Father, we glorify you, Lord. We praise you. We're thankful for because you took us by the hand and brought us into your presence and given us, Lord, an experience with you, forgiven us of our sins, for our salvation, Lord for the baptism with the Holy Spirit upon your people, upon your church. Lord, we praise you because our gaze is only towards you, Lord, for heavens, Lord, to your eternity. We're thankful, Lord, for your people in this place, for the brethren who are participating with us through the internet. Bless, Lord, each home, each family, so that we may also return, Lord, into our homes, into our dwellings, to testify of what you have done, Lord, every day, in our midst. Lord, give your people a week of blessings in your presence, of deliverances and victories. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit. We may be with the entire people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service is over. The brethren who are with us through electronic means we have a couple of bread and there deacons and ushers that can give you the proper assistance here in the church the brand who desire we're here at your dis the disposal of the brand here amen in the future from the month of july probably we're going to have yet another service day of service on thursday but Pastor Ronudo will inform you in, in a few days there's also a need for for the church to have a vigil in this next few days the church will be informed of the day and the hour of the vigil 